So long before baseball, football, soccer, and hockey, one of the Anglo-American world's favorite spectator sports was pedestrianism, or competitive walking. That's right, people filled stadiums to watch people walk around a track, sometimes for days at a time. <laughs> So competitive walking has its origins in the early 19th century. At this time, walking contexts took place outside on open land and pitted individuals against themselves. So one of the most famous early pedestrians was Robert Barclay Al sorry, Allardyce. In 1809, he walked 1,000 miles in 1,000 hours for a wager of 1,000 guineas. By the middle part of the 19th century, races were being held on measured outdoor tracks. In this case, walkers competed against each other and a clock rather than themselves, although distances were never standardized. Eventually, however, competitive walking made its way inside. So there were many formats for indoor walking races, but the most popular in the 1870s and the 1880s, which was the height of pedestrianism, was the six-day go-as-you-please match in which competitors could walk or run as they saw fit. Most, however, not surprisingly, chose to walk. So in a go-as-you-please race, pedestrians would circle a track hundreds of times over the course of six days. Races were held from Monday to Saturday in order to avoid competition on Sundays, and the prize went to the individual who traveled the furthest distance in the allotted time. So in the best matches, the winning distance could be 500 miles or more, which is more than 800 kilometers. So in 1880, a Haitian-American walker, this man, Frank Hart, broke the world record by walking 565 miles. Hart was at once wildly popular and not surprisingly for a black athlete subject to racism on and off the track. Now, most endurance walkers were men, but there were some women as well. Bertha von Hillern was an early and prominent German-American walker uh, who traveled around the U.S. to compete and perform. Perhaps not surprisingly, reactions to women pedestrians were mixed. So feminists celebrated them as examples of women's athletic potential and also a claim to equality. While for others, endurance walking raised questions about women athletes' uh, femininity and their morality. So there were attempts to regulate and even ban women's matches. Um, men's races were also subject to criticism, but never with quite the same vehemence. <laughs> so let us imagine that we're among the hundreds or even thousands of spectators packed into a poorly lit, poorly ventilated, and smoky stadium to catch a glimpse of a small group of athletes wearing a range of athletic and not-so-athletic looking clothing as they walk and walk and walk around a sawdust or rolled dirt track. It's more than likely that we've placed a bet on the race and the contestants are competing for a purse. And this is significant in 19th century sport because it's before gambling and sport is frowned upon and also before athletes were encouraged to participate purely for the love of the game. <laughs> for all of the popularity of endurance walking, the contest, at least at times, must be excruciatingly boring. <laughs> for us as spectators, but also for athletes. So for this reasons, as well as for reasons of personal responsibility, such as jobs and family, spectators come and go over the course of the six days. And it's not just the audience that comes and goes, but the walkers as well. <laughs> as needed, spectator, or competitors retire to small furnished tents to rest, change their clothes, eat, apply a tincture, ingest a tonic, the walkers, in other words, aren't always walking. That said, their breaks are minimal. So when Frank Hart, pictured here again, broke the world record in 1880, he only rested for 23 hours and 23 minutes during the six-day competition. In other words, he was moving for more than 20 hours a day for six days. Which begs the question, how do the walkers do it? Natural ability, training regimens, as well as strategy all contributed to success. But so did tonics, which is Victorian for performance-enhancing drugs. <laughs> so coca leaves, cocaine, alcohol, and strychnine were all consumed or injected to increase endurance and treat aches and pains. So how do we make sense of this popularity? So first of all, it was part of the craze of physical culture, which refers to activities and exercises that promoted the cultivation of a fit and healthy body. 
So while uh, athletes, these walkers, were examples on the track, they also offered walking demonstrations. So they were sort of representatives. Second, it was part of a cultural obsession with endurance in this period. So pedestrianism celebrated the ability to continue on in spite of pain and boredom and to do so with very little rest. It made sense and resonated with a society that was increasingly curious about both the potential but also the limits of the body. Third, pedestrianism appealed to, or at least made sense, to a society that was rapidly industrializing. So pedestrianism contributed to people thinking about bodies as machines. But even more importantly, by placing walkers on a track, in a stadium, in front of spectators' very eyes, it put the body as a machine on display. Of course, we can't ignore the element of the spectacular. The lure of the crowd, gambling, the band playing, the physical deterioration of the participants. Some dropped from exhaustion during the race, others bled from their feet and occasionally from their thighs, which they would slash to relieve tension in their muscles. <laughs> For real. Pedestrianism fell out of favor in the late 1880s to similarly organized and potentially more exciting six-day cycling races. In the US in the 1890s, laws which mandated sleep put an end to such endurance competitions altogether. Though race walking as a sport didn't disappear and continues on today. I will close with a photo of this man, a largely forgotten Canadian Olympian by the name of George Goulding, who won the gold medal in the inaugural 10 kilometer walk, a slightly less grueling distance than 500 miles, uh, at the 1912 Summer Olympics in Stockholm. Thank you.